Andrew, why is this not deal over? Do you think, game over, do you think the FTC just wants to put up a fight even if Lena Khan thinks she can't win? Well, thank you for having me. I think that if we take a step back and look at the broader gaming market, this is a massive market, nearly $200 billion in revenue. And even a consolidated Microsoft and Activision Blizzard would only be the third largest player in the market behind Tencent and Sony. There are so many, we think, remedies or potential concessions that Microsoft or Activision could make to get this deal over the line. We still think that it's more likely than not that the deal gets done, but the FTC suit and the various international regulatory um, processes are likely to complicate the issue and make this more of a drawn out process than maybe Microsoft or Activision had expected at the outset of the deal. I mean, does this come down to the question really of consumer harm? Are consumers actually hurt by this or a more European style? Are competitors hurt by it? Because it seems like the strongest argument is, oh, well, Microsoft's going to potentially hold back some games or features or capabilities from Sony, from others in the marketplace. If Microsoft simply promises not to do that, uh, if there are remedies, how doesn't that take care of the problem? Yeah, I think it's a little bit of both in this case. Um, I think in, in contrast to some of the other, certainly some of the other consolidations in the gaming industry, I think some of the competitors or the other parties to this merger might have been a little bit more loud and a little bit more strident in their um, opposition than normal. So I think the anti-competitive and anti-consumer cases are both being taken into account. The other issue is around Microsoft's acquisition of ZeniMax, their last sizable acquisition that they did in the gaming space, they had made assurances that they would not wall off the Bethesda content that was associated with the acquisition. And then we've come to find out that some of these upcoming games like uh, Redfall and Starfield are likely to be exclusive to Microsoft platforms. So I don't think that in this case, an assurance would probably be enough. I think you would likely need something more concrete as a result of that. Andrew, I'm also curious where you think Activision is valued or would be trading if there were no Microsoft deal right now. And I'm glad you asked that question because I think this is something that has a, a, a part of the story that has changed pretty significantly over the course of this acquisition saga, um, which has now lasted most of 2022. In contrast to earlier in the year, now Activision is in a, what we think is a pretty attractive situation, even on a standalone basis. So even if the regulatory process does not go well for the completion of this deal, we still think that the standalone Activision Blizzard is looking pretty good at this point. You know, with Call of Duty, Overwatch, um, both having recent releases that are you know very very strong. Um, the upcoming Diablo 4, and we think a couple of other things still in the pipeline. Um, Activision Blizzard is looking pretty pretty decent as, a, as an investment in its own right, which was part of the uh, catalyst behind our upgrade of the stock to outperform last month.